Hello and welcome to Knowledge by Nature. In today's video, we are going to be doing a flip through of Dimensions Math 4A and 4B. So if you were going by years, this would be fourth grade generally. I'm also going to, after our flip through, this is gonna be kind of a multi-part here where I'm gonna to talk to you and I'm gonna tell you why I feel this is the best math for us and also some tips and tricks. So let's just jump in really quickly and look here. So we have a teacher's guide for 4A and 4B. The year is split up into two semesters. So we have A and B. And if you stay on a pretty regular path, you will finish this in one year generally or get really, really close. Each A and B have a textbook. You can see here a workbook for both and a test book for both. Now you can use all of these things or you can choose not to use them all and that will be some of the things that I talk about when I'm going through kind of my tips and tricks for using this program. Now we started using dimensions in kindergarten. We used it for kindergarten, first grade, um, then second grade was kind of a disaster. We did not use it for second grade. I regret that. And then we've come back to it for third grade and fourth grade. So I have used this for quite a while. So I have um, quite a bit of experience with it. And I just want to tell you why we've stuck with this math curriculum for so long. So first, let's jump in and let's look at the content. First, looking at 4A, which is your first semester. Now there is a teacher's guide, which you see here, and there is a home instructor's guide. I have never used the home instructor's guide, but from what I understand, it's the exact same material. It's just wrote differently. Chapter one, we're looking at numbers to millions. Chapter two, addition and subtraction. Chapter three, multiples and factors. Chapter four, multiplication. Chapter five, division. Chapter 6, Fractions. Chapter 7, Adding and Subtracting Fractions. Chapter 8, Multiplying a Fraction and a Whole Number. Chapter 9, Line Graphs and Line Plots. That is 4A. So all of that, this is a mastery program, so you will notice we are dealing with fractions, fractions, fractions for 6, 7, and 8 because it is mastery. But I'm also gonna share with you how you can kind of spiral this a little bit. So stay tuned. Let's look at 4B now. Things that are covered in Dimensions Math 4B. Chapter 10, measurement. Chapter 11, area and perimeter. Chapter 12, decimals. Chapter 13, addition and subtraction of decimals. Chapter 14, Multiplication and Division of Decimals. Chapter 15, Angles. Then finishing out the fourth grade year with Chapter 16, Lines and Shapes. Chapter 17, Properties of Cuboids. And so if you wanna see any of the specifics of each one, you can always pause at that section and take a good look at all of the offerings in there. Every Dimensions Math lesson is set up very, very similar. Let's just choose a Chapter 2 edition. Here it begins with the suggested number of class periods. You always have a chapter opener, lessons that go down the bottom, and then workbook solutions will be at the very, very back. This is the page that it is referring to. So an edition starts on page 46 the textbook and the workbook pages that this coordinates with, and then the objectives of each. Now, generally, we are going to do the chapter opener with the first lesson. You then flow over into the notes. Each chapter is filled with notes for the teacher, also examples of things that they should have already learned to be able to do this, materials that you'll need, black line masters, which are either free from printing online, or you can actually get a book um, that is already printed from dimensions.com. So, or I guess singaporemath.com actually for dimensions. And then there are activities and a blank note sheet paper. Here we jump over to the chapter opener 
which gives the teacher some detail about the chapter opener. It gives you an image of the textbook for the student. So if I go to page 37 of the textbook, you will see that that matches my little image there, which is one of my biggest um, pros for using the teacher's guide is I love seeing this page here. Then we jump into our lesson where we always follow the think, learn, do, and activity section. The big pencil here points you to the page that will coordinate with the workbook. So this workbook page may not actually be there. Nope, it's not, <laughs> but I could, I'll show you in another one where we will go to this and it will show you the workbook page. Then that would be the end of a lesson. Then we go to the back here of this chapter. We go to the end of chapter two and we turn to these gray sections, which are the workbook pages with the answers in red. So it allows for really, really quick grading, which also I like, and also the answers are in red for the textbook page sample that you have as well. So whatever they need to be answering, the answer is in red. Um, here is a little activity with a black line master right here. Again, you can print that off and be able to follow this through. Now let's jump over to 4B really quickly and you will see that we're following the same thing. So let's just jump here to, what do we have here? Chapter 11, where it is area and perimeter. You can see suggested number of class periods, six to seven, chapter opener, we have our lessons and you will see that we have practice wrote in here. It's already built in, which is really nice. The pages that coordinate with the textbook and the workbook and the objectives. Again, we have our teacher's notes, what they should already have learned over here. So it's telling you in 3B, if you've never used this before, in 3B, they learned this. So if your student haven't if your student hasn't learned this, then maybe you need to review this before actually jumping into it. This gives you all of the notes for that chapter, including the materials, the black line masters, and the activities. Again, we jump over to the chapter opener. I just happen to be hitting all the orange ones. You can see there's green sections here. There's a uh, purple. For some reason, I just keep hitting the yellow section or the orange. Chapter 11 page 33. So let's go to the textbook, go to page 33. Here you see we have a match. Then we come over here to the lesson pages where we have all of their pages here. Let's do a quick flip. You can see it's also very, very colorful, which I love. Little pencil here lets us know where the workbook page is. So exercise one, page 29. Same thing, it is going to tell you in your teacher's book right here, page one or page 29. Let's go to the workbook, page 29. The workbook is all black and white, so do take note of that. Um, so you have a basic section, which you're always gonna have with the workbook. Then you are going to have regular practice and a challenge, okay? And then that would be the end of the workbook there. So then we also have a test, which let's quickly look here. Each chapter has test A and test B for every single chapter that is available. Test A focuses on key concepts and fundamental problem solving skills. Test B focuses on the application of analytical skills, thinking skills, and heuristics. So if we just look really quickly, chapter 10, Test A has a few pages. And that was 17 questions for test A. Test B, again, it has like even a little timer there if you're interested in like really doing this test. You can see there are a lot of word problems involved in test B and there are 17 questions again. So if we look at test 11 again, here we have all the measurements. Then we go to test 11, test B. Let's see if it also has a lot of word problems. Quite a few, so not as many as the first one, but that is something pretty heavy with dimensions. Word problems are pretty key in Singapore math all around. 
So with 4A and 4B, you see everything that is taught in that lesson. You can see that the teacher's guide is very, very colorful. Everything is color except for the workbook pages, which are mostly black and white with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red. The textbook is very, very colorful and everything is color coordinated down here at the bottom. So here we have like this teal color and that is gonna run for all of chapter 14. Chapter 13 moves over into green. So all really colorful. The workbook pages are black and white, but they do have lots of imagery on them as far as like drawings and kind of helping the workbook work easier for your student, I feel like. And then we have the test booklet, which again is black and white. Now, how can you use this and is this the best math program? For us, yes. Is it perfect? No. But I do think for us right now that this is the best math program because it is building such a strong mathematical foundation that it appears that math becomes quite easy for her. Um, is it the way that I learned it? Absolutely not, but that may be a good thing because I don't have the comfort and the relationship with math that I believe that she is going to have. The way that this is taught and it's presented with like using manipulatives and pictorial, all this kind of thing, this program works beautifully. But I do think you have to tweak it a little bit. And one of the ways that we have done that is we don't do all of this, okay? We actually do our lesson and we use the textbook to write in and answer. So let's just open to a random one here. So we have lesson two, comparing and ordering fractions. It says to go to page 141. The very first thing that we're gonna do together is we're gonna do this think section, which is part of your lesson here. We're gonna do the think method together. Really, I'm gonna do this question right here and I'm gonna offer her manipulatives to work with for her to think about before we actually do them. Then after she's had some time to think about it, we're gonna go to method one where we're seeing the learn section and we're seeing different ways that this problem could have been solved. It's not just one way to solve the problem, it's multiple ways. And one of these ways may really, really click with your student. Then we're gonna go to the do section and she and I are gonna do a few of these together and then it turns over to independent work. And then I have her do the work independently. I want to jump in here really quickly and just add one more note. Another key tip is to set a timer because there is so much that you can do. Sometimes you may push to do your whole lesson and that's just really not feasible. So you decide what you feel is an appropriate amount of time for you to do math and then just be done whether that is completing your lesson or not. That is a hiccup that we had had probably back in first grade, and I still have to fight it off and on, but yes, set a timer. How long do you want to spend on math and then stop and pick up the next day wherever you were? If we need more practice, if we didn't quite get it, then we're going to turn to the workbook, and I'm going to pull a few workbook questions for her to do. If she's got it, great. We're going to the next one. If she doesn't, we're working some more in the workbook until we get it. Another great way that I use the test and the workbook is I mentioned that this is a mastery based program. Maybe you have been on fractions for three chapters and your child is honestly a little bit tired of being in fractions or you are kind of in a lull of homeschool, you don't really want to start a new lesson or you're doing year round school and you kind of want to do some spiral review, this is where these can come in. Maybe you do fractions, your main lesson, four days a week, come in here and pull a workbook from where you were doing like maybe long division or something and assign a workbook page or some test. That is a great way to use these if you have them. Now, another tip for using Dimensions Math is, so we have modified this to work for us. 
One um, extra tip for saving a little bit of money is I try to buy from eBay. Um, I have been able to find almost every year on eBay used, um, which is why a good chunk of this workbook was gone because the first three, four chapters were done in the workbook. But this one was brand new from eBay and I had a considerable savings on that. So there was nothing in that. If you're not gonna use the workbook and the test, which we have done in the past, we didn't touch these at all, many, many times that you can find on these on eBay where you have the teacher's guide and the textbook. And like I said, we write in them, we just use it. There is enough practice on here that you don't have to have the workbook usually. There's just so, so much practice that you have lots and lots of options. I never assign every single question in the textbook for a lesson. It would just be too much. It would be overwhelming. It would make frustration. And so I choose some. What this is, is there's so many options because you can use it so many different ways. And so yes, look on eBay, see if you can find yourself this set right here. Most of the time you're not gonna find both from the same seller, but you never know. But that is a way to save yourself some money. Um, if you have any questions about Dimensions Math, please let me know. Like I said, we have nearly five years experience with Dimensions now. Um, there's also a subscription service, which I'm gonna have a video coming out about that. And that's another cool thing about Dimensions is it offers teacher's guide, home instructor's guide, textbook, workbook, test book. Now a subscription service it just has so many options that you can make this your own. Another really positive thing about this is that it holds up to standards. I don't have to ever wonder, are we behind when I'm using this program? No, we are ahead of most standards. Now, maybe you're not really concerned with standards and that's fine. You've got a great program. But if you are, know that you are at or above most standards with this program, which also, if you're just coming into Dimensions, make sure you do the little um, checklist to see what level you need to be coming in at because it is intensive, but the way that it's approached, the way that it is taught, all the hands-on, it just, it's, it's a good program. It's not perfect, but for us, it is the best one for us right now. So again, if you have any questions, drop them down below. I'd love to know, do you use this? Do you like this? Are you always on the math search? Um, this year, I'm not on the math search. I have finally decided, you know what? This is where it's at right now, so I'm not even searching. So in case you are still searching, trying to find your as close to perfect as you can get, I hope this is helpful. I'll see you in my next one, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Bye-bye.